Hey, it's Steve from Feature Upvote here. Thanks for watching this video. I'm going to demonstrate to you the problem that Feature Upvote solves, how to get started with it, and how to customize the feedback board it creates for you in some simple but powerful ways. So let's get started with creating a, a feedback board. I'm here on the Feature Upvote homepage. We just click on Start Free Trial. Now, before I fill in this form, I want to tell you a bit about the problem we're trying to solve and our philosophy of how we solve it. So if you're overwhelmed with customer feedback coming from different channels and being kept in different places in Trello and in Slack and in email and Jira and a spreadsheet, then you have the problem we're trying to solve. We offer one centralized place to keep your customer feedback in a place where customers can optionally add it themselves. They can vote on the feedback items and they can even comment on other people's feedback. Now, as I said, the problem we're trying to solve involves you being overwhelmed with feedback. So we want to make your life easier, not harder. And therefore, we have tried to keep Feature Upvote as simple as possible, both for you as a site owner and for your users and customers. Now this has guided our design decisions as we've been growing the product and adding more features to it, we've always kept asking ourselves, are we making life easier for our users? Now I've told you this already because you'll see this principle already in the design of the form I'm about to fill in. To start your free trial, you only need to fill in these three form fields you see in front of you. So your email, a password so you can protect access, and the name of the product you want feedback on. So I want to create a, a feedback board for this fictional product, CSV Vortex. And now I click on Create. We wait a moment and, believe it or not, that's all you need to do to get started. You now have a place where your customers can add suggestions they can upvote suggestions and they can comment on other people's uh, suggestions. Let's have a look at that board. So, in keeping with our aim to make your life easier, we've put in some default um, settings here that all our customers get and they work for many of our customers and hopefully they work for you, but if not, things are easy to change. So we've given your board a title, we've put in a, a headline here, and we've added a couple of sample suggestions. You'll notice that this suggestion, Moderate Me, is fainter than the one below it, and that's because Moderate Me has the status of, a, of awaiting approval. Let me briefly explain this. When your customers make a suggestion, add a suggestion to your board, Initially, it can only be seen by them and by you, the moderator. You need to approve it before it shows to everybody else. Now, why we've done that is, well, a bit of an unfortunate aspect of the internet. As soon as you put a form field on the internet, it starts attracting spam and abuse and trolling and so on. So we have a few things in place to minimize this. And part of it is requiring you to approve suggestions when they come in. But look, it's really easy. I'm going to show you. I just click on the suggestion name to view it. And here we have a change status drop down, and we just change that to under consideration. That's it. There are actually a couple of other ways to approve them as well, but for now we'll just show you this. Now you can see it's in the same uh, brightness as the other suggestion, and then tag says under consideration. Let's add a suggestion. Add PDF export. In keeping with our principle of making Feature Upvote as easy as possible for both you and your customers to use, we've made a few decisions in this form field. Sorry, in this form. We've made it so that almost everything is optional. The title has to be filled in. You'll see if I don't have a title, uh, we have this red number here. We only have to have at least one character in the title. The description is optional. If we made it required, you would 
you would have some people just write some text like this just to fill in the space. So we figured rather than force people to have to do that, let's leave it optional. You know, the, the less things that are required, the more likely people are to actually give you feedback. Uh, an image can be added, it can be a screenshot locally, or it can be from an image somewhere on the web. Name and email have been automatically filled in here because I'm using this as the moderator. But if it wasn't, we'll be doing what we can to encourage the, the browser to autofill this. So let's post that suggestion. It was added and approved. Because I'm a moderator, it's been approved automatically. Now, let's say I got an email just after creating that suggestion from a customer who also asked for PDF export. What you could do is copy and paste this URL, send it to them and ask them to vote it up. Or you could do this for them. You could vote it up for them. And to do so, click on the voting options menu, click on upvote on behalf of customer, and here you can put their name. I don't know their name in the email, so I'm going to leave these blank. But now we've added that vote. And if we go back to the uh, the suggestion list, you can see that this has two votes and this is at the top of the list. You know what, we think this is a pretty good suggestion. Our teams met together and talked about it and decided we're going to do it. So let's move it to planned. And you'll see that now it's got this tag changed to planned. And from here we can choose to see just the planned suggestions or those under consideration. You can add your own tags. This is really popular way of creating an ad hoc series of categories. So maybe PDF export is a version two feature. We'll create that as a tag. And we're only going to add this to our desktop version, not to our mobile app. So we'll create a desktop app, desktop tag. Now, when we go to the suggestions list, we've got this tags menu that's appeared. And here you can filter to view suggestions just by specific tags. You can even just click on the tag to do the same effect. Let's customize our board. We've given you a helpful shortcut here to customize it. So we can change the name, we can add your logo. Let's change the, the background color to a dark green. So I want to explain a bit about the customizations we offer to you. Again, we've kept in the principle of making your life easier, not harder. So we've tried to keep the customizations simple and straightforward and optional uh, so that you know it doesn't become a major task getting this set up for you. Let's uh, add some custom explanation text. So uh, suggestions for improvements only please support requests go to I can't type support at featureupvote.com. Add a copyright message here. Okay, there's some other options, but this is enough for now. Oh, I just wanted to show you the languages. If you are, if your customers are primarily using a language other than English, we offer several languages and we add more all the time. Talk to us if your language is not there. Okay, let's save that board and view our changes. We now have this darker banner, the text we added there, your copyright message here. Uh, if you really want to change everything about the appearance of the board, you can do this by using custom CSS. You will, of course, need the help of a, of a web designer to do this. Now, it's great that we have this feedback board, but what about putting it in the hands of our users? All you need to do is copy and paste this URL and they can get access to the board. Now, it's not a very nice URL, this feedback-mkwwvqi. We automatically create this for you when your board's created, but you can change it. Let's go to the customize board URL. 
Okay, and let's create something more in keeping with our board name. CSV Vortex .com. You can, of course, also use a custom domain name. This is available at no extra charge for all our customers. We believe very strongly in people being able to keep access to the data and really make feature up vote part of their own their own company board without having to do too much work. Just write to us if you want that custom domain name. Now if we view the live page, you'll see the URL has changed to csvvortex.com, csvvortex.futureupvote.com. There's a couple of other things I want to, to show you. A very popular request we get is how do I stop just anyone from seeing the suggestions? So let's make our board private. Access and permissions. This is a public board. Okay, let's make it a private board. We just have to add a password. And now only people with the password can see the board. While we're here, let's make it so that only moderators can add suggestions. Everybody else can comment and vote on them. Now let's see what those two changes look like. Copy that URL, we'll go to an incognito window to simulate being a non-moderator. Okay, there you see that a password must be entered. It only has to be entered once, as long as the user stays on the same device and browser, it will be remember that they have actually added the, uh, entered the password. Notice also there is no add button. That's because we've made it so that only moderators can add suggestions. However, anybody else can also add comments. That's all I'm going to show you today in this video. Uh, we do have some other ways to improve your board. You can integrate with Jira, you can integrate with Slack, you can add SSO, that is single sign-on, which is very, very important for some of our corporate users who only want people within the organization to be able to see their feedback board. Thanks for watching. I'd love to tell you more about Feature Upvote. Contact us at support at featureupvote.com and we'll, we're happy there to answer any questions you may have.